Hey up friends, how's it going? It's Matt and you're listening to episode 37 of the Looking Sideways Action Sports Podcast. Yes, I have got another cold. Apologies in advance for that. The good news is that it I didn't have the cold when I did the interview, just the intro, so please forgive me. Anyway, yeah, it's my show where I try and uncover the most fascinating stories in action sports and other related endeavours, as usual. Thank you for uh, tuning in, downloading the show, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy this one. So regular listeners, and irregular listeners actually, might have noticed that I've had a, a slow couple of weeks podcast-wise, so apologies for that. I mean, the tr- I've just been busy, to tell you the truth. Anyone who follows me on Instagram probably noticed that I went to Canada for a week, which was to write a story for a UK newspaper, Metro. I was over in the Okanagan Valley in British Columbia, and uh, well, it's pretty good over there, isn't it? Me and Boog, my wife and better half, we had an amazing time, loved to go back, scored it, went to Big White, Silver Star, and uh, yeah, it was brilliant. Big thanks to everyone that hosted me over there, and uh, no doubt I'll be sharing that one on social when it comes out, which I believe is probably going to be in the autumn now. Anyway, on to today's episode, which I hope everybody enjoys. I certainly enjoyed it myself, so it's part two of my interview with Billy Morgan, This bit recorded a couple of weeks after he got back from Pyeongchang in Korea with a a medal around his neck. And Billy's such a legend. As you'll hear, he's been ridiculously busy since he got back from Korea. Jet-lagged, inundated with media invitations and commitments. And after, uh, yeah, all right, a fair amount of WhatsApp back and forth, he still found time to carve out an afternoon to speak to me for this. Um, We recorded it at the British Olympic Association HQ in London on the afternoon of the big famous first words party in honour of Billy's achievement. And well, it's uh, it's a good one, this. As he did in part one, Billy gave me an unrivaled insight into how it felt during the Olympic final, how he got to the point where a medal was a possibility, how he coped with the life in the goldfish bowl of the Olympic village. He went deep into his relationship with Hamish, and uh, Hamish McKnight, that is his coach and the the game management that was involved in working their way through that event. Talked a lot about his mental state, talked about that infamous scooter video, what that was all about. And, uh, and yeah, as you're going to have confirmed for you once again, more proof that Billy's a total one off really. And that those media depictions of him as the most unstarry and down to earth Olympic medal winner you're ever likely to meet are completely founded in truth. Honesty, humbleness, self-analysis, self-deprecation and above all a love and commitment to snowboarding that have taken him to the biggest success of his life in fine style. It's all here. And if you ask me, Billy's an absolutely brilliant representative for snowboarding. I don't care what any anyone says to be honest. And I really hope he's got time to enjoy this achievement and the rest of the season in peace with the boys, which is all he really wants to do. Yeah, I was really pleased, to be honest, that Billy sort of uh, came back on the show and, you know, took it in the same spirit as he did episode one, completely opened up, completely relaxed. We had a great chat and um, we did some good pictures, which I'm going to post online. Thank you once again to my uh, very close friend and collaborator, Owen Tozer, for his help there. So, yeah, nice one, Billy. Thanks again for coming on the show and I will see you in Lax in a few weeks. Uh, to everyone else, enjoy it. Here it is, my interview with Billy Morgan, Risk and Reward Part 2. Enjoy. So when did you get back? Oh, mate, I don't even remember. Um... The 27th? The 27th. I don't know, what the, it's the 8th now, so I've been back for 10 days. Yeah, it was, the final was two weeks ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. And your, it seems like ages ago. And it was the Saturday, wasn't it? If I yeah, remember rightly. Yeah, yeah. And then the closing ceremony was on the Sunday. Yeah. And then you flew home after that. Yeah. Right. So imagine it was all a bit, a bit hectic. Yeah, it's been mad. Right. What's the maddest thing that's happened since you've been since this is all there's no like one crazy thing it's just uh, the contrast between coming back without a medal and coming back with a medal is just dramatic in what way like the the attention yeah just like loads of the same interview (laughs) I must say I've seen a few of them well you must have given 
one press conference that they all wrote the same story off the back of, right? Yeah, I think so. But then I did, you know, two or three wee conferences and then loads of kind of live stuff. And, and I mean, it was all the same vibe about everything, which is fine because, you know, everybody wants to know the same same stuff after that. But. Yeah. How did you find that then? Because you, are, you, are you comfortable with that, doing that sort of stuff? Not really. It, but if I've got energy... It's fine. Like if I've if I've woken up naturally and you know I've got you know it's not really late or anything. I'm not jet lagged. I'm I'm I'm, I'm normally all right. Right, but, which unfortunately is normally. Oh, I came how straight off the plane and went to do. <laughs> was it the one show? The first, yeah, the, the first the, thing, the evening show. I was just hanging. It right, was, it was horrible. I just just got off the plane. I had a business flight, so I got more sleep than I normally would. But I was just so jet lagged and I hadn't right. slept really. Right. Yeah. And you were straight into it. So you you had a week of that basically. Well, I'm guessing yeah. it's still going on. Yeah. And then I went home, so I had a couple of nights out like with the boys, which was nice. Nice. Um, but, you know, not not really a rest. And, and then this week's been the same. Just, what, just hacked it? Yeah, a few interviews. I went to Manchester to go to like a the football game up there, which is not, not normally my vibe, but it was pretty cool. You what, know, City, really, Basel? Yeah. Right. Which was, you know, an experience for me. That was rad. Yeah. Um, all the VOP treatment. Who sorted that, that out? Um... Adam, my agent, and right. I think they invited me because they wanted me to come and like talk, do, a, do on on the stage, and right. you know do a bit of chatting, which is nice. Cause so there you go. From that, um, you know, such a mainstream sport to be interested in snowboarding, I guess is you know it's quite cool. Yeah. How was that? Was that intimidating? So what you did that in front of the players? No, it was in front of like everybody as they were coming in and right. it was on the screens in the stadium while people were like coming in to sit down so oh, really? it was pretty intense it was it was the most intense interview i think i've done yet so it's a live interview that got broadcast to the whole stadium yeah right yeah yeah and not out of the stadium yeah I think but just, just inside yeah. or maybe they use it for stuff out i don't know but yeah had to go up on on the stage and like outside it was pretty intense did you so you've got an agent did you i'm guessing you probably didn't have a much of a plan for what's gonna happen after this did you did you talk about it as in, like, oh, what would happen if we win? You know? No, see, I, I, I've been saying that's the the biggest um, thing, not being prepared for it at all, because I didn't. I wanted to go and do my best. Yeah. But if everybody rides well on the day, yeah, then I, I wasn't going to get a medal. You know. Well, you said to me when we spoke, which was only six weeks ago, but you said if I get to the final, I'll be happy. Yeah. You know. And I scraped through. You know, so I was already pumped to be in the final, and I was like, I just want to do. A back trip and a front trip, and, yeah. and then I'll be stoked, you know. And I, I didn't think that it would do that well. Yeah. So you didn't basically, you didn't have a plan for this. Are nah. you, are you rapidly making one? I've just been playing it as it goes. Yeah. Yeah, and kind of just yeah, free balling it. Have you, have you noticed then through your agent that you're getting a lot more stuff? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Definitely, it's easier to kind of get stuff from his perspective yeah um i got offered to go i needed some clothes for this um football thing so i, was, <laughs> right. I don't have any smart clothes they were like smart casual i was like that oh, doesn't exist in my yeah. wardrobe so <laughs> so uh top man said oh you can come in and like have a at the vip room at the top and do a wee shop with an oh, assistant wicked. and you know so you're getting that vip thing yeah like, you're, getting, mean, it's you're, getting weird. Up, you're getting the upgrades you're getting the you're getting all that yeah I mean it is really nice but also at the same time when people treat me like that I feel awkward because you know I'm not used to it and I don't know I've got this image that like that kind of first class VIP thing is for people that either deserve or have the money to be treated like that you know and I I don't know. It just freaks me out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, well, it's not normal, is it? And also, it's not the life you're used to living. No. I mean, I've been lucky enough to, you know, be upgraded and get VIP treatment on certain things. And I always just think like, wow, imagine if this was actually your life full time. That would be pretty weird. You know, it's nice to enjoy it when it happens. And it's nice to... Yeah, know. for sure. I just feel like it's a bit like looking down on people from the vibe I get from like when you look watch businessmen on their flights and stuff. I don't know, it freaks me out. Well, you, I think that's what they're paying for, isn't it? You yeah. Know, that space between the rest of us, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Away from the peons. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, um, yeah, so we it's six weeks since we chatted. And like I say, you were you were pretty, I think you were setting your sights pretty realistically, weren't you? You know, you seemed quite determined not to go in and be like, oh yeah, I'm going to win a medal or whatever. You were just a bit like, I want to land, I want to do my best. Um, so how was it when you got there? 
it was weird when we got there. It was it was it was super cold, and I wasn't prepared for that at all. And we were riding in like seven layers for slope style, but it kind of like quickly warmed up. But the whole the whole slope style thing was a bit of a shambles, um, because of the wind and all that. Yeah, it, it it kind of messed up the competition a bit, which left like a really sour taste in a lot of people's mouths after. Oh, that's after interesting. Slope style, because yeah. you heard that with the girls, but you didn't really hear that with the men. Did you see Spencer O'Brien's blog, by the way? I'm not no. She just wrote a pretty stinging piece about the whole thing, calling right. out Fist in the IOC, blah, blah. I'll put a link in, in on my website yeah, to it. But, I know bad decisions but, were made, but like... <sighs> the vibe wasn't great. No, it, 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 just things like that can be difficult, you know? It's not, it's not easy to run an event like that. And when the wind comes in, you can't just be recklessly shifting stuff around onto a date when you don't know if the weather's going to be better and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so... I never get involved with that. Like, you know, they have meetings and, you know, decide what to do, but there's never a, a right thing to do. It's right. always like a decision to make, you know, which is difficult. Do they communicate well in that, in that situation? I think there was lack of communication a little bit there, but then nobody stood up, you know. Afterwards, everyone was like, oh, you know, we shouldn't have done that. But nobody stood up in the TC meeting and said, we want this to happen. When right. they, and you like a big thing with all the coaches saying they wanted this. That didn't happen. Right. And then the next day, people were like moaning about it. I right. had the chance the day before, and it didn't happen. So right. So how did you feel after the comp? Because obviously you didn't make final. The slope, I mean, obviously. Um, I was bummed, but I, I just completely dismissed it. I was like, okay, that's really not cool. Me being annoyed and down about that is not going to help me right now. Right. Um, look forward. I've got another shot. So see, see, for, forget about it. And, and did it? Did it work? You I guess so, yeah. I you mean, can tell yourself that, can't you? But then actually... Yeah, no. I w because there was a bit of, like, relief in the that being over, you know, there was the stress of all the kind of slope-style contest. Yeah. When that was over, that was like, right, you know, I'm, that's half of the stress of this whole Olympic thing gone. Right. So that was a bit of relief. Yeah. And and also, I was, I've still got something else to concentrate on, so it, that, that's like a waste of my time worrying about that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. See, so the... It was stressful by the sounds of it initially, you know, because it because it was. A, I remember, it, it I remember, is. there was a lot of pre prep for you. There was it was quite manic, you know, that week we met. You had a bit of an injury, and you, know, you had to go to lax. There was a lot going on. Yeah, and then you got there, and then you had a week practice, and then you had the event. I mean, it was hectic, basically. Yeah, wasn't it was. It, it wasn't chill because I had that injury, which took me out for three or four weeks. Yeah, which is just not ideal that time of year. So almost when that was done, it was a bit of a relief that you had a couple of weeks to sort of reset. By the sounds of it, yeah. I think that definitely helped that space in between. Yeah. Because we had a, a proper chill. We went down to Seoul and like, you know, kind of cruised around and like spaced ourselves out from it a little bit, which which was quite relaxing in itself. That's the team did that? No, no, no just me, Hamish, Jack. Um, we just went down to Seoul. Yeah, for, on, just on got like away from jolly. it. Yeah. Um, what was the vibe like in the team after Slope Style? Because obviously it didn't really go according to plan, did it? Like we were happened to KE and, you know... Not every, I don't think anyone made the final, did they, actually? Which was no, probably yeah, not we, what you were all aiming no, for. No, we completely, right? yeah. Well, the, the snowboard freestyle side completely kind of flopped the slope style thing. But like I say, it was really like roll the dice. It didn't come down really to what people had planned to do on their runs. People had done their slope style runs in practice, you know? Yeah. And then you get a bit of headwind and people are knocked out yeah yeah people that you've seen do their runs like you know cleveland and it's like really yeah <laughs> well i mean that was the theme of the whole games wasn't it really just random stuff happening yeah, yeah. well red gerard winning i mean yeah but, i mean his yeah I'd, I, mean, I, d I don't um that that was the right decision he definitely did the best run on the day Totally. But, but you wouldn't have put your money on him on, on the go in, would you? you neither, would neither would he. No, he no, saw his reaction. It. Yeah, he just didn't know. He still, still doesn't know what's going on. No, <laughs> no. And he was brilliant, actually. I mean, he was a great winner, wasn't he? Yeah, I think it's good. It's good for snowboarding and it's good for, you know, our our image. So Yeah. So then you, yeah, so then the women's slope was obviously a complete disaster, really, wasn't it? Because they got even more of a shit yeah. show with the weather. Yeah. And that was talked about a lot you know it felt like it was did it did it get talked about internally a lot as well yeah but you know it was it quickly became like it's all everybody talked about for a little bit so it was 
all over to us. You know, everyone was dead devastated about it, but not worth talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's an, it's an easy out for a lot of people. I mean, the, the people I feel really bad for are the people that were genuinely pushing the medals and got got taken down that day because it just, you know, it just wasn't fair. Yeah, to run it in those conditions, basically. <laughs> yeah, it just wasn't fair on them. I mean, if it was a World Cup, it, would, it wouldn't have been anywhere near as bad because it's just another World Cup. Yeah. There's more, but there's not more Olympic no. Games. This it's is just a one. Land, isn't it? Yeah, one in four years. Yeah. Um, which makes it, yeah, a huge difference. Yeah. So you had this two weeks. You went to Seoul. You made a... Uh, wow, we've got the same socks on. That's pretty hilarious. Um, no way. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, thanks, Stance. Um, you, uh, you you made a scoot room video. That was, yeah. <laughs> a, a lot of people said this is the best thing to come out of the Olympics. Yeah, I was stoked. I had such a good day as well. So, so what, was, what was that all about? Well, when we got there, we went... The first bit of free time we had, we went down to the other the other village, the coastal village, just to kind of check it out. And they had scooters down there. The, the coastal village was much better. They had like a better canteen. It was ten degrees warmer. Right. They had table tennis tables and like five pool tables, and it was just generally lots better down there. Yeah. And then we found out they had scooters. We were like, "What is this? Why? Why don't we have any scooters? Why don't we get scooters?" Yeah. So we took them out for you know a little bit and like busted around, and then me and Rowan started. You know, doing a couple of stunts, and then I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna have to come back and do this properly." Right. Um, so yeah, after slope, Jamie was like, "You know, we've got a free evening. Should we just go go down there and do it, make a film?" Yeah, <laughs> and it was good fun. Yeah, <laughs> we had a really good time. Well, you brought that out. I think it was like two. I'm not probably you weren't obviously thinking about this, but I think it's like two days before the final, wasn't it? Yeah, because it. Because I remember going on Facebook, and suddenly it's like, "Well, we filmed it and put it up that day." Yeah, yeah, and and it. And obviously that's something that the mainstream picked up on a little bit because they were like, this unconventional athlete who prepares for his biggest event of his life by doing a scooting video. Obviously, that's just what you do, isn't it? Stuff like that. But Yeah. So but, was that was the whole thing, we, we consciously thinking, I need to just do something normal. You know what I mean? Like, Or was it just literally, you were just pissing about? Well, it's the boredom thing. I mean, we're not the type of athletes that just smash the gym until our event comes around. Of course. So, you know, especially, you know, me and Rowan, we're just sat like cruising around <laughs> doing whatever, <laughs> you know, and it, and it did get, get pretty boring at times. Um, Red Bull actually had a lounge where they had it as like a place where we could go out of the village to go and hang out. Right. Um, and me and Rowan must have played like 100 frames of pool. Right. Just smashed it and like played in Time Crisis. It was in like an arcade. It was really good, actually. It was a good place to go and like unwind and kind of perfect for us because I think we because it's like a skill based thing and what we do is pretty gnarly we use any kind of distraction as a distraction so we can that's how we can relax and it is a conscious thing we don't I don't think it's conscious it's just what we do yeah um it's conscious for me now I think I'm like right I need to go and do something to distract myself like I said last time when you know like if I play games and stuff it's to, yeah. to distract myself I mean, whatever it is that's kind of what I'm getting at because I'm just thinking about the fact that you know you have got a massive event on the horizon you've got two weeks to sit around and get your head right you know you've had a bit of a disappointing start <laughs> so I'm, and, and you're you know you one thing I've realised from talking to you last couple of episodes that we've been doing is you know you are learning from these experiences aren't you You know as an yeah. athlete you are totally trying to like take these things that you're learning and, and adapt them to the way you are aren't you as an individual I think so yeah I think that you know the that comes with the age I've started to notice those things now only because I've been doing it for such a long time yeah now I can notice it I mean I never realized before that you know the you get wiser with age but this is kind of yeah like this kind of stuff makes me think well this is what I've been doing for the last 30 contests I've been doing without thinking about it but it takes a long time to realise there's a reason those things there's a reason yeah yeah and that's why when you read those press reports and that that are like this crazy snowboarder making a scooter video I saw that I was like well it's not really about that is it you know it's a scooter video but what it is is is, is this thing that we're talking about isn't it you know yeah and you went viral always good yeah with these things I mean, it's cool yeah <laughs> right so then you had the big air so how are you feeling leading up to it? I, uh, the practice for the first one, I'd just done loads of back trips and I was really lucky that I was getting the pop and I was going quite big because sometimes I struggle a little bit with that um, and lose points, which we obviously couldn't have any of that. What did, you think, what did you think when you saw the jump? Because there's a lot of talk about it being small 
did that how much did that affect your your tactics to be honest i was thinking i just hope it's small enough that people can't do quads because i really didn't want to i didn't want to turn up and do a quad i knew if it was big enough i'd probably have to um but i was like oh i think it's, it's just about small enough for people to not be able to and, and it was so it was quite you know quite handy for me i thought it was better for the event personally. it was it was really good for the girls yeah because they smashed the it. girls big it was, was a really was, good job it was brilliant it was so good it and was it, such a brilliant standard wasn't it yeah and there wasn't speed issues you know we weren't fighting for speed you could you could just kind of hit it it wasn't scary it was just a really nice jump which made which made the the contest actually quite fun right you know it was enjoyable because you could I, you could perform to your best i didn't feel unsafe yeah when i was riding it you know sometimes we're dropping into events and we're like this, you know this is pretty gnarly yeah but w when it's a really nice jump like that it it changes it and it's it's a pleasure to to try your hardest tricks in in a good environment how much of a conversation with hamish do you have when you when you get to a contest and you see you know, you see the jump, you, you know, all this stuff that we're talking about. How much of a chat do you, do you have where you're like, okay, well, therefore I need to, you know, maybe do this trick or we need to land here, you know what I mean? Or we need to like try and, do, do you go into it in that much detail? Can you explain that? Yeah. So with Hamish, it's, I, I know the drill. We roll up to the contest. We, we work towards the, the, the harder tricks as soon as possible. Um, so, so that's kind of the deal when we get there. Yeah. But then we start getting to the point where time is getting crushed, we're getting closer to the contest, and if we're not there yet, then, you know, things need to be done. Hamish is like, you need to be measuring this trick a little bit further down because they're, they're taking points off people for not doing that. So then we might need to spend a couple of runs working on that or, you know, if I'm not getting the pop, then look, they're the kind of things that I'll go back to him. And every time I go back up, he'll mention that one thing for me to concentrate on, on that next run and with the backside trip I was actually quite lucky that it was working for me um, we didn't really need to have too much of a conversation about that but it really came in when I wanted to do the front trip um, because I'd only done one of them once in uh, Sass Fay not long before Yeah. Um, and I needed him then Yeah. because for a, a multiple reasons can you, yeah. can you explain? Like the what, reasons? yeah like what he, what, what, what he brings to you in this situation Basically, I, it's so hard to explain, yeah. It's the plan. It's what the best plan is. If, you know, if, if, I, if I go up and I do a front side, I need to get on the front side triples as soon as possible. Yeah. Do I do a, front side, a few front side threes? Do I hang out and spend an hour doing front side threes? Or do I just push front side tens and start pushing as soon as possible? Because you know? if you neglect the early stuff, you might be neglecting the takeoff. Yeah. But if you don't start working towards the measuring all the flips to, yeah. to the to the right spot, then you won't have time to catch up later on. So it's a question of almost like building a profile, if you like, to get where you want to get to. You know, like how yeah. do you, how do you get the confidence and how do you get the you know the I can't think of the word, but like you know, get your head straight so you can actually land the trick you want on this jump. You know what I mean? Like build, put it all together in a certain yeah. It has sequence, like lots of blocks, like. yeah, and you need to get all those blocks together to make that trick. Yeah, but you have to build each one of those blocks as well. Yeah, yeah. So he helps with that, basically. Yeah. The other thing I really noticed as well is you seem to be really trying to land at the same point. Does it, was that, you know, like pretty far down, like you were... Yeah. Was that was that, con was that a calculated yeah. thing? Yeah, we, we, we knew that we needed to go bigger to get to get the points, that especially was, on the back trip. That was noticeable in, in your riding, I thought. You, know, yeah. you could really see, uh, it, it seemed very calculated that you were thinking like, yeah, I need to be I'm measuring it here. down there. Yeah, that, that was it. And that's what I needed Hamish for because he would be like, keep the speed the same, but slow the trick down so yeah. it measures to the right spot. And especially with a trick I haven't done very many times or just once, Yeah, I can't feel yet how how fast that's all going on, but Hamish can see it. And he can sometimes shout on the knuckle. Right. When I leave the jump, he's right. like, you, you're big. And, and, I'll be, and then I can change my body shape and slow it down a little bit. Yeah. And if he wasn't there like, big, on the, on the, on the knuckle, yeah. I would do it too fast and wreck myself like I did. I hurt my bum. But that was the first time I tried it. So, yeah. yeah. So, the, so the plan was always back trip qual qualifiers in first round, really, to get through? Yeah, to get yeah. into the final and then in the There fin. wasn't another option if I'd 
if I'd tried back trip 16 realistically I wouldn't have got it because I hadn't prepped it yeah so, you, so I'm not going to call it your safety trip but you know what I mean it, it was is, like yeah. that, that you're back 14 that's like right I'm going to that's going to get me there yeah. which it did and then in the luckily final, yeah and, just about and then in, yeah you got through and then in the final first run back trip and then the front trip so the front trip now obviously you only actually landed it in your final run in the final what I got uh, one all right one and two good ones in a, in a practice day prior to the finals. But the so best one you did was the final one of the final, wasn't it? No, I did a I did a, a slightly nicer one in right. in practice. You did a few days before. So that so that must have given you a nice psychological. Yeah, I was pretty stoked going in. I was like, yeah. all I have to do is go and do this now because I was worried after qualies. I was like, I don't have another trick. We we went up actually on the first practice day after quali- qualifying with two ideas of working towards cab trip 14 and yep. front trip 14. So we, we, we said, um, do a couple of cab hits, try a cab 10. Yeah, the building blocks that you're talking do about. The building blocks for a cab 14. Yeah. And then do a couple of front unders and a front 10. Yeah. Do the building blocks for front 10. And then compare them and then decide which way to go, whether we go front trip or cab trip 14. Yeah, okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, but totally. Immediately, we we worked, we noticed my cab wasn't going to work. Right, it was, I was just having a mare, so we were just like, right, let's just smash the the front side. Right, um, which you know that's that decision making that I need Hamish for. Yeah, um, which worked. So in the lead up to the games, how had you had your preparation for that approach gone well? Because you, you know, when I look at it, it looks like you had a lot of problems. Didn't have any prep. Yeah, because you got have any of the prep I, I planned to have. Airbag didn't really work out for a variety of yeah. reasons. I then, mean, had one attempt in Sasfe. Yeah, airbag didn't work out. Injured myself. Yeah, couldn't go to Lax. Even if I could go to Lax, that was cancelled. Yeah. So um, then, was that what was behind the decision to take Matt then as a reserve? Because we didn't know if my knee was going to bust. Yeah. So and how how did that affect you that? When, when that call was made did that take any pressure off? it did because it meant if I crashed my mate Matt could have a go yeah I, I do you kinda, know what I mean? I, I kind of figured and that I was like it. yeah I was like you know if I smashed myself to bits this this is really good for Matt yeah um, <laughs> which is a really funny way of looking at it but I would have almost been you know if if I couldn't have gone which is unfortunate for me yeah I could have been stoked for my mate yeah 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 so, yeah, the final obviously landed and then there was, what, like five five guys to go or something? Something like that? Yeah. How was that waiting? Did you, did you sort of, did you kind of just think, well, I've landed, whatever? Yeah. So you weren't thinking, oh my God, I might win a medal here if I I didn't, fought. no. I was, yeah. like, I was like, sick, you know? I've done I it. Like, I fell on the first run. Yeah. I thought it was game over because I didn't land any front triples in practice. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to, I needed two goes at that front trip to get it. Yeah. So I thought if I've messed this back trip up, I have to do that again. I only get one shot. Yeah. But yeah, managed to pull it together. Um, and I was just like so stoked that I hadn't let all my mates down that were sat at home in, in the pub, you know? Because yeah. after yeah, I look- fell on the first one, I was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look like an idiot now because I'm going to fall three times or whatever, you know? Like this is the bit I'm really interested in actually, like how you coped with that. Because... You've been consistent every conversation that I've had with you about about this, which is basically like all I was focused on was about landing the trick. You know what I mean? Like I want to land, I want to do my best. You said that beforehand. You obviously said that that was disappointing with the slope style. You get to the final, you fall on your first run, you know, and you, what was dealing with that pressure like? I mean, you must have felt pressure at that point. You must have been thinking like... For me, it was it was the my chances of, of, of landing two tricks had dramatically dropped yeah. after I'd fallen on that first run. Because we do like a wee number crunch in our heads, you know, like if you need two goes at that, I think Hamish was like, there's about, you know, a 40% chance that you'll land if you have two goes at it, um, which isn't that great to start with. And um, so I, I was like, you know, my chances of doing well here have just dramatically dropped. But the plan is, it's just plan B then. We're just on to do it again and then you get one swing at the front trip so I still had to execute a plan I just changed plan yeah do you remember how you felt at the top before you dropped him that last one 
um, for the front front trip. Yeah, I actually was. I, I, I checked my pockets and didn't know where my phone was. <laughs> right, this is this is this really weird thing that I've got going on. I can't work out. Right, <laughs> so <laughs> um, I was really distracted because I was like, oh, "Don't worry about your phone. That's not important." Have right I done now. my zip up? Yeah, no, I was like, I thought I left it on the chair where everyone was watching TV. So I was like, did I do that? Did I give it to Rowan? I don't know. It's not in my pocket. And they were like, oh, you can drop now. And I was like, okay, right. Fuck your phone. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> but I couldn't not think about it. I just dropped in thinking about my phone. phone. Everyone's wondering where the phone is. And and my main point from Hamish was uh, slide down further. So essentially you don't get as much speed. You on know? the running. Do more of a side slip down before you drop in straight. Past the... Yeah. Yeah. Because in practice, I was going too fast and overshooting the trick. Right. So so I, I did. He, he said, you know, slip down to that point and then do your trick. Yeah. Um, and that, and that's what I did, yeah. I just slid down to the, the point that he said and went for it. Right. And, and it worked. But I, maybe that distraction at the top kind of, like not calmed me down but stopped me self panicking in my stopped head I don't know stopped you being up there going oh my god everyone's watching me and if I fuck this up then, <laughs> yeah you know. it was a really weird thing but yeah yeah a lot was happening then I can't really recall it yeah um, especially when you know I landed and I was just like literally over the moon I was so lit because you because you'd landed yeah because you you know, I just genuinely thought oh I'll give it a rip yeah my chances of landing it are real low but whatever yeah and I landed, I was like, my God. Yeah. So what do you think happened with Mark and Max? Because, you know, obviously, like, massively, f- you know, favourites, really. You know what I mean? Like... Voodoo. <laughs> 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 what, 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 like, got in their own heads? Like, you know... <sighs> maybe. Maybe it's, you know, too much pressure. Stretched, stretched the trick too far, but they've... They've both done that trick. Yeah. They both well, have that trick on That's online. why I asked the question, and really. And they've both been to X Games and, and been under pressure. Yeah. And I don't know. Destiny. <laughs> 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 I was supposed to have this bronze medal all along. How did, how did, at what point, though, did you think, fuck, I'm going to win a medal here? When Max fell. And, and what was that because like? Because Max doesn't fall. No, he doesn't. So, you know, like, he never Mark does. fell, and I was like... <laughs> I'm still no closer to getting a medal because yeah. Max is coming and yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter because Max is going to bump me off for sure. And then I didn't really pay attention. I was just kind of like, you know, stood at the bottom knowing everyone was looking at me. So I was just like, oh my God, like just kind of walk around and don't do anything stupid. And then, yeah, Max came down. And and yeah, well, he, he fell over and I just didn't know. I think I was, I was just holding my head. I was like, like, no way. And I kind of looked across to... Jack and, and Rowan and all the boys were all over there and they were like silently going mental because they couldn't be like, yeah, could they? But yeah, they were obviously like the realisation that I'd, I'd got a medal. It was, it, was, it was weird. It must have been surreal. That's what I thought when I was watching it, cause, cause it because I know how you went into it. I, I, I remember thinking like, wow, this must be, this must be fucking weird. <laughs> you know, like because it's like... Oh wow, this is happening. You know what I mean? That yeah, I, it I was. didn't think it was going to happen at all. Yeah, and now it's happening. Yeah, and then right. someone had to go and get like a flag from like a supporter in the crowd because the other guys, the other nations, had like a team flag for whoever got on the podium. Yeah, and we were like, we don't have that. That's brilliant. <laughs> so we actually that. went and grabbed one off someone in the crowd, and I was like, holy shit! I'm like walking around at the bottom with a with the flag on, doing the doing the podium thing and it just it didn't really hit me because I was just constantly thinking oh right I've got to do this I've got to go back and have my foot taken here and this and that and it wasn't until after I'd been doped and I'd gone like I'd, the first bit of free time I had I got my phone out and it was just like yeah yeah you found your phone then <laughs> yeah 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 Rowan had my phone I gave it to Rowan <laughs> <laughs> and you had a record number of notifications I imagine yeah and then after that so what happens do you get like IOC'd off then? It's basically like, right, you, you're coming with us. Yeah. Press conference, doping, blah, blah. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of things that I had to do and then a few things that I had, you know, I knew I had to do the next day. So I said, can we do everything now? And I was just like, just get everything that we need to do for this like after contest media thing done ASAP. Because it was quite early that we were done. So I had the whole rest of the day to 
go and see all the media and all that, which was quite good because when everyone woke up in the morning, that was when all that that media came out so yeah. they could watch it go to sleep and then when they woke up all the stuff was on the news which yeah, was really yeah. good We're, everyone caught up aren't they yeah and basically it was a massive story back home mm. and then you got the closing ceremony thing which was another big sort of news story yeah and, completely unexpected and, and, how, and a big honour for a snowboarder like that's, I think that was the big thing for a lot of people was we're still kind of looked on as the I don't know the word for it the you know the the novelty, the novelty, element. greasy snowboarders that are at the Olympics. Well, you know what was funny watching these Olympics as a, as a spectator back home was that that this is the Olympics that's changed. I think yeah. because firstly, the athletes. I just watched it on the BBC, so I'm kind of basing it on that. But the athletes that they had in the studio clearly respected you lot a lot. You know what I mean? It was like right. I didn't see anything. Well, so you wouldn't have good done, to hear. You, they obviously took GB Park and Pipe and BSS and all this, you know, all the freestyle pretty seriously. And then the other thing is we had the best Olympics, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what the normal sports that, that are tipped to do well didn't really perform, did they? And, mm. and you know, freestyle has kind of, come, you know, come out on top really. I know it's not about that, but so I kind of think that's going to change really. And I, I do think the fact that you got offered that opportunity, which is obviously a UK sport decision, is is a bit of a good indication of that, isn't it? You know. Yeah, it, yeah. And like what, I say, it was an honour. And what was it like? Again, it was just a whirlwind. Like I, I didn't expect it, so I had to go and kind of do all the prep. Um, I had this idea that I would like be like leading everybody out, like in the opening ceremony, but that didn't happen. So it, that that was the only thing I was a bit weird. I was like kind of stood in that circle with the flag. And then I was like, hang on, the boys are all just going to come out and like walk past and I'm still going to be stood here with the flag. So <laughs> I was a bit like, oh no. I wanted to like, I don't know, jam with my homies. But um, but that was cool. Luckily I stood next to um, an Aussie dude. So we just kind of had the crack while uh, while it was all going on. It was, yeah. it was, it was, it was good. I had to re- rein it in and, you know, behave myself obviously because... Because there were a lot of eyes on you. Yeah. Yeah. Even though that picture of you balancing it was everywhere on your chin you know yeah that was i like, think there was only one person that didn't like that saying that the the kids are going to now be in danger because they might try and balance something on their chin but oh, god <laughs> damn you <baby. laughs> Whatever. really um and what was the vibe like among the uh the other competitors the snowboarders like because you always get this there was a lot of sort of sort of slapping back slapping sort of ah oh, snowboarders not like all the other competitors you know we all get on and is, is that the reality of it it is, yeah. I mean, I kind of went along with it, just believing, you know, the, the, that's what everyone says and, you know, the, the camaraderie in that. But after going to the Olympics, you do see that we do get along. Yeah. More than... Compared to, like, the others. Yeah, because there's a table. The, the classic thing is the, the catering. You know, if there's a wee table with, with lots of snowboarders on it and all the other nations are sat kind of segregated. Yeah. But um, especially towards the end, like... All, all the snowboarders and all the coaches that spend all this time together are all just kind of like jamming and having a good time and enjoying it for what it is yeah it's like an experience that you're all sharing yeah right so the, yeah there definitely is that we we don't make that up so how did it feel on the podium did you have did you were you able to sort of you know take that moment for the kind of proper life life moment that it is you know were you able to be like wow this is this is happening or was yeah, it still that, it, it was then it was when after I'd been given the medal and and the other boys had and I was just like kind of stood there like you know no way the, the thing that made me most stoked was the like the crew like the GB crew that had come and like watched the medal ceremony yeah every time I looked at them I was just like yes that was in the whole team cool, cool on boys yeah I mean, it was mainly the the park and pipe lot, yeah, and a few um, a few of the other disciplines came and hung out. But well, there's that great photo of you lot, isn't there? Do you, have you seen that GB park and pipe picture of everyone the group hug? Yeah, that? and I'm on the other side of the fence. Yeah, yeah, that made me cry in the morning. I mean, that's an amazing picture. <laughs> yeah, that's one of Mellish's, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. It wasn't. Some, was it? some random took that. Was it? We don't right. know who it was. Right. I mean, that is such a good picture because it really is it's obviously cheesy, but it does kind of symbolise. The, the whole thing doesn't it really yeah it was really genuine like, I didn't know that picture had been taken till later on you know because yeah. it was after it happened that was the only place I could get to them to speak to them Yeah, and they all came running round like 
and yeah, it was a really yeah, it was that's what it was like. Yeah. So what do you think your um your main memory is of it now? It's a couple. It's two weeks, isn't it? What well, if you look at the riding? Is there is there anything that's standing out? I I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot a lot that happened in in that period. Um, I feel like. I rode almost to my to my best, you know. I went, I turned up to do my best, and yeah. I did. And I did. Um, and obviously, I can't I can't be disappointed with my with my performance. So that's what I wanted from the Olympics, and and that's what I came away with. Yeah, with a bonus. Yeah. So all in all, the the, the experience has just been like mental, really. But, yeah. Um, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard to explain. I can't really like put it into words. Well, that level of job satisfaction, if I can put it in such kind of normal terms, is not something that a lot of people get to experience. Really, you know what I mean? On such a on such a level, to to sort of work so hard to get somewhere, get the platform to try and do your best, and then and then actually perform to your best. It's not it's not a regular thing, yeah. really. In in a sport where you could easily just fuck it up. Yeah. It is a bit of a, like, you know, not voodoo, like you say, but it is one of them things where you're like, wow, everything actually worked out. You know, everything locked into place for yeah. this to happen. I did have everything I needed that day. All the times I've done well, I've had a good crew around. Yeah. You know, I've... Well, that's basically it, really. Yeah. But I, you, I, I felt like, you know, like I had everything I needed. There was nothing that I didn't have. The conditions were right. I felt good. My mates were there. Is that a hindsight thing? Is that looking back and, and recognising yeah, that? Yeah, I didn't know that at the time. You didn't know I was that actually a little bit ill, but maybe, maybe the cod, because I'd like, I had my cold and flu tablets just before and I had like, I was feeling like crap in the morning and I put them at the right time so they just kicked in and then I was like feeling better. Yeah. Um, just everything kind of worked well at the time. Yeah. So one question I've got for you. Do you, do you think you've got a positive mindset or a negative mindset? I must have a negative mindset. I must do. Really? Yeah. That's what you think? Not, you mean in, in general? I'm just going to leave it at that, really. Yeah, I'm just interested in, what you, in how you look at it. I wish I could be more positive about everything. Right. Because people that know me well are like, like don't, don't put yourself down, like... But you can't do that. It's impossible. It's like saying, "Don't worry." It's it's, it's a para paradigm. Is it called a paradigm? You know, like thinking about not worrying. Yeah. Makes you, you're then worrying about not worrying. Yeah, about yeah. Not worrying, and you're like, Ugh. so I think that's the the same deal with the with that. Because yeah. you've you know, it just seems from from knowing you and speaking to you, you do have to overcome self doubts, and in this case, you did. You know. Yeah. But do you? But do that's you, where that environment is is where where that stops and that's probably why I love snowboarding so much really or anything that that takes my mind off that because when I sit still in a quiet room I worry and I'm not having a good time yeah and when I'm doing something where my mind is somewhere else I'm not worried about that yeah and that that could be the reason why I need to do intense stuff I was thinking about this the other day because the more intense the stuff you're doing the less brain power you have for anything else yeah well it's a bit of a you know this is actually a question that leslie mckenna asked me to ask you it's a, it's a flow thing isn't it you know what i mean do you, do you buy into that this idea that you can you can access like a flow state that that yeah um you know somebody in your position must be in a pretty unique place to have an opinion on that you know is that is that something that you recognize i think yeah i think the flow state is a thing when you when you're in the zone, yeah, and that's what you're all about. Can you um, can you access it like at will? Do no, you know I mean? definitely not. No, it's like it's lucky if you get it when you need it. Yeah, I, I feel like. I mean, I'm sure if you did if you looked into it, and you did some meditation shenanigans. Maybe yeah, you could. <laughs> you could look, yeah, look yeah. Into harnessing the chi. Is, is it these? You know what you just said earlier, like. Oh well, this event and the events I've done well, they had a certain set of circumstances that that enabled me to perform at my best. Do you think it's that kind? You know what I mean? It's that kind of 
situation that, yeah, that, what, that what, can lead to it, you know. Whatever s- things I needed to get to that place were there at the time. Yeah, but, but, but it's not something that you're consciously trying to n- no. conjure up, if you like. No, because I think it could be different on different days. Right. Because depending on what mood you're in, you might want something different. So you can't manufacture it, I don't think. Yeah. Um, can you characterise it? Can you explain what, what it is to you? It must just be that, that like, that place that I like, that I like to be, I guess. I don't know. I don't, that, that, yeah, that's a new, new train of thought for me. I'll leave it with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I've got something else to worry about. <laughs> so the other thing I was really interested in is when, when we um, chatted last time, you, you know, and you said this a lot over the course of the Olympics, you know, you were pretty open about how you'd been scared, you know, and you've been, so, and you said earlier, like, but this is like the, doing these things helps me stop worrying, if you like. So what, what's going to be next, do you reckon? Because you had an answer six weeks ago. I'd be interested to see what it's like now after the sort of fairly massive change that that's happened. I don't, I don't think the answer has changed. There's, I want to go and enjoy the rest of the season because yeah. the what I wanted was it, you know, it to be to be over the press, the pressure of the Olympics to have been gone, and I can enjoy the rest of the season. Um, through getting a medal there I've had like an increase of pressure in a different in a different place because there's all this kind of attention and media stuff going on but I hope that doesn't change what I you know what still what I can do with the rest of the season like my plans are still the same like where I'm going like my, my literal plans monsoon march has yeah it's been <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd like to say it's been stopped by the media things but literally in, any chance of stopped someone's been stoked and been up for some sort of monsoonery <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it, and we're on a friday saturday now so yeah it's i think there's going to be a bit of monsooning tonight in the <laughs> let's be honest the floodgates are yeah opening. so and so what are you going to do where are you going to go where are you going riding i might get a spring battle and then and then lax you're gonna go lax yeah nice yeah yeah i, I, I just keep having this image of like the p60 when it's sunny yeah. and like riding in a hoodie and Happy place. just slamming and laughing it off. And Everyone there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be stoked to, you know, shred a bit of that. Yeah. It's going to be a good week. Cruise out, yeah. There's going to be a lot of people out. Yeah. For sure. And then what about, because I, I asked people for questions. One question came in, and this is such a snowboard question. Are you going to do a film part? I, I, I'm not the man for, for the job. You know, realistically, I'm not. I'm not a a steezy rider. I'd, I'd have to put the work in. That's a bit in. harsh. No, when I watch people's video parts and stuff, I, I look at it in in awe, and I think that's not that's not that's not my type of riding. Um, I mean, I'd like to, but I think I'd have to put too much work in to get into that. To where you'd, be, where, where you'd be satisfied. Yeah, yeah. Or I'm, I'm so be, critical on my riding. Where you think, think it'd be legit, for want of a better word. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'd be worried it's not going to be legit enough. Um, I think that's where why I've been good at what I've been doing is because I've got a simple goal, yeah. and it's land that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah. I've thought about that. Right. And I would like to, but I think I'd like to just... It wouldn't be a, like, a, like a part, it would just be shreddery. I wouldn't want it to be serious. I wouldn't want it to be like a, wow, you know, legit part. I just want it to be like, this is what my shredding is like when, when I just let, let go. And well, do the, I mean, what's good about snowboarding these days is that is that is a thing, isn't it? You know, look at, you know, the side hit films and, you know, there there is, and we were talking about the Candide stuff earlier, like obviously it's a bit of a special case, but you don't have to do this, the traditional video part with the ender do you and all that yeah. stuff you can you can do things that are a bit more expressive these days you can take a bit of an unusual angle if you want and yeah try and try and look at it in a different way one thing uh we were, I'd had a red bull dinner the other day and a couple of drinks and they're like you know is there anything you want to do and the, the immediate thing I, I thought is i just want like a really sick cannon made <laughs> that you can do doubles off do you know what i mean 
and like like imagine at the bottom of lax or something yeah 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 like a really nice like safe cannon like yeah a big one yeah and got like the shred crew on it and like because we had this weird session in Meyerhofen a few years ago where there was like a wee gap onto a the wall ride but you could gap onto the top right and then shoot off into the landing of the third jump okay and it was like me rowan jamie trinder matt mccormick and all just like like letting rip on this because it was the perfect shape yeah even if you messed it up and like landed upside down it was like real safe and we had so much fun that day i was thinking like uh, so something it, like that a session a, yeah just like come up with an idea for a proper session yeah just some session stuff yeah some like cool features that aren't they don't have to be like that gnarly or techy or whatever but just like really fun yeah and especially this time of year i think that'd be that'd be cool yeah yeah and especially if it's just like a camera on it and everyone's having a crease up time that's what that's where i've had to bet my best times in snowboarding is when stuff like that's been going on yeah so a couple more because uh yeah we're, we're times are we maxing cra- it out? well we're not really to be honest oh, but right. um we're, we're fine really what have you felt about the media coverage of, you, of yourself because there's been a lot of the old like crazy billy morgan with the loop seat around his neck sort of stuff you know yeah i, I mean i'm in in two ways about it I'm quite mixed you know it's kind of it is a, a bit of me i guess they've at least they haven't kind of shied away from trying to portray what i don't know I don't know, do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I think they, I think to be honest, it's, it's a bit of a compliment because they are doing it to say, like, this guy's got some personality, you know what I mean? But it's just in that mainstream journalism environment, that's how they tell that story. Yeah, I've had that quite a lot from, from people that I haven't known. I bumped into a dude on the train and he, 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 he said, you know, it was, it was quite refreshing to have, um, have someone, someone like you that, you know, like, that I could kind of relate to and get what you're saying. Um, and that was someone like completely random, yeah. a fair bit older than me. And you know, that was like, oh, you know, like, thanks, man. Like, that, that's legit. And that's when it kind of, you know, I, I realised that, you know, that's kind of cool. Because like, I guess when you're in the public eye in the way that you've been last month, you don't have a say how people are going to take you, dear. You know? No, it could go another way. And yeah. That's I some, mean, look at, Elise, worry about. look at Elise Christie. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. just look at, look at, how she's been just caned, doesn't she, really? You know? Yeah, she didn't deserve that. Well, no, she didn't. Of course she didn't. But people just make these snap judgments, don't they, of people yeah. in the public eye. And, and go, it doesn't like, take much for a few people to jump on the bandwagon and then everyone's on the bandwagon and it's yeah. a bit harsh. But yeah, have you, have you paid any attention to the usual thing that happens around the Olympics, which is basically like, oh, what a waste of money. Like, why are we paying for that? Yeah, I mean, we, we get asked that a lot, but... I, I say, you know, I, I'm not going to get into politics because I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know whether that money would be better spent somewhere else. But I think if people aren't inspired to go out and do sport or whatever kind of fun activity that is, what what else are they going to do? What what, what, did you, what what did you want to spend that money on? Making sure that the roads are a little bit flatter. Like, <laughs> well, cool, cheers, guys. <laughs> but I know we'd like flatter roads, but... <laughs> I think you know we'd just turn into a um, a bunch of robots where everything runs smoothly, and if people don't do sport or, or fun stuff, yeah, and it's important that to whatever level, if any of the athletes that go and go to the Olympics inspire a kid to go out outdoors instead of staying indoors, it's been a success. Yeah, which is kind of the argument, isn't it? And the the counter argument, if you like. For spending the money. I mean, how much do, do we have? Do, can we have a number crunch here? <laughs> what What are the figures? How much did the Olympics cost our government compared to the defence budget? Yeah, I, I don't know. No, I mean, I'm sure a warship was is is ten times more expensive than the Olympics. Yeah, or a nuclear missile. Yeah, that we're never going to use. Well, we're in the BOA offices, so I'm sure we could go and ask someone. Get a number crunch <laughs> <laughs> and, find, and find out. Yeah, that, yeah. Anyway, that's what that's what I've been thinking recently. Yeah, you, we're probably gonna get more of it, aren't you? So yeah, good. To yeah, have maybe an I should really. brush up on my numbers so I can be like, bam. Yeah, shoot them down. Up. Yeah. Um, so where's your medal? In my bag. Yeah. Oh, let's have a look. Yeah. I didn't actually think you were gonna say that. 
I think you say like, oh, it's, you know. Well, I wear it all the time, actually. But <laughs> <laughs> there, there we go. Is. There's an Olympic bike. Wow, it's heavy, isn't it? Yeah. Jesus. Obviously, picture of this going up. So where are you going to keep it? Uh, I kind of have to, if I'm going to do any media stuff, which I do a lot of at the moment, I'll keep it in my bag there. Are you worried about that? Nah. What happens if you lose it? They give you another one? No, I mean, I think someone lost it and got, got it kind of replaced, but it wasn't, obviously it's not the same one, so it's not actually that medal anymore. That'd be but I'll just, I'll just do my best not to lose it. That'd be an awkward phone call, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Joe Clark lost his, he fell out of his bag. Really? Was it him or, I don't know, someone, it, it, they cycled home and when they got home the zip was open and the medal was gone, but someone gave it to him back. Oh my God. Someone found it and... That'd be pretty... Yeah, found him. That'd be pretty stressful. Wow. That's pretty amazing. So, how do you feel what, when you? It, what blows my mind is that, like, that what that kind of represents as an object. I've never had something that is so, so like pointless as such, but represents has so much meaning. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and and people and that people aren't... are genuinely like, you know, I'll go into a room, um, and there'll be some people that don't know me, didn't recognise me, and you'll pull that out, and they're like instantly like paying attention like you know what, what where's this medal come from whose is that what what's happened and it's like yeah it's it's pretty fruity i won't get too carried away when i turned up here i said to the girl on reception oh, i met see billy morgan she goes who's that <laughs> nice <laughs> i was like why well, he's just won a medal actually and she's like oh i should know that shouldn't i sorry i'm a temp like, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it, like you say it's what other people the value that other people bestow on it, isn't it? That's kind of fairly mental. Yeah. It's just one of those things, isn't it, in modern life, like one of those symbols that you could show it to you, like my mum, you know, and she'd be like, or you could show it to someone in Mongolia and be like, what this? And they'd probably be like, ah, right, okay. You know, that's what that means. Yeah. It's just got that kind of kind of meaning, hasn't it? Yeah. Which I still haven't worked out yet, but... I think that's It gonna... still blows my mind. It's still, I, I just kind of think, like, I, I, I got it. I went and actually got a medal. You actually did it. <laughs> it actually happened. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Yeah. I think that's going to take a while. Did you speak to Jenny about it? Yeah, she was like, oh, you know, obviously I've been through this, so yeah. let me know if you need some assistance. It's a pretty exclusive club, isn't it? It is, yeah. Really? The gold one's better. <laughs> well, you know... We, let's not be too harsh on ourselves. <laughs> yeah, I think... I think that's like glass half empty there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. you nearly got silver. I was pretty close, eh? Yeah. Some people said that I should have, some of the coaches. Do you speak to any of the judges? No, I don't really speak to the judges. I leave that. There's nothing you can do when you speak to the judges. No. Once the decision is made, the decision is made, so... You don't worry about it. I never really speak to them anyway. Yeah. And how you... F so, final... This is the final question, because we should go and grab a pint or something after this but what is your feeling now about your place in snowboarding because that was a bit of a theme wasn't it in the first part of the conversation that we had before you went you know there was yeah. that there was that whole th thread about how you know you've been given shit by the core and all that has this changed any of that do you think it hasn't changed it for Philip for me I don't Maybe. I actually haven't thought about this. Um, I think my place is still my place because I'm, I'm a contest rider and I, and I just did well at that contest. So as far as like the snowboarding industry goes, I don't think anything will, has, has changed. No. Which is good. Yeah. I guess. Well, that snowboarding probably won't, will it? Ultimately. Yeah, yeah. Basically. Yeah. Nice. Well, we're off out tonight. Thanks yeah. for doing it, man. That's all right. No problem, mate. Yeah. Thanks for talking to me. That's all right. Well, it's always a pleasure. Yeah. Well, thanks for finding the time. I know you've had a busy week. Nice one. So there you go. That was my interview, Billy. And uh, yeah, it was great, wasn't it? And what a total legend he really is. As you might imagine, Monsoon March kicked off in earnest later that night. And I've got to be honest, that was a pretty large contributory factor to the cold that I've got yet again. So yeah. It was worth it though, it was a good night. Anyway, also a massive thanks to everybody who got in touch about the Charlie Dark episode. 
what a cracker that one was, eh? And if you're a new listener that was attracted by that one, then I hope you stuck around, dug into the archive, got into some of the other episodes. I was really gratified, actually, that so many listeners who hadn't heard of Charlie and Rundum Crew got so much out of it. Obviously, Charlie's a completely visionary and inspirational character. And uh, yeah, his words seem to have really struck a chord with everybody. And, you know, big thanks to Charlie, actually, who got in touch and said it was the interview that he was most proud of, that he uh, he really dug it. He's been enjoying the podcast. And uh, yeah, he's certainly done a, a, a large amount. He's been a big help, let's, should I say, in um, spreading the word far and wide on that one. So what else has been going on? It is housekeeping corner, as everybody that listens to this probably knows by now. Got to be honest, been giving the whole financing the podcast thing some thought in recent weeks. Doing a bit of research, seeing what other podcast peers do. Because, I mean, I do enjoy it and, and, you know, it's great doing it for free. But I do wonder how sustainable that is because it does take a lot of time. I'm a year in, I've done 37 episodes, which I think is pretty legit. You know, I've got massive audience around the world now which i'm very very grateful for but i do have a a day job and uh and a life and a wife and all that stuff so yeah you know i'm I'm looking into it i mean like i said there's a few routes you you seem to be able to go down there's the the sponsorship there's the whole lisa mattress blue apron hey guys you should really buy this stuff honest route which which i always find hilarious because podcasting is such a forward-thinking medium and it's saddled with the worst sub radio adverts on the media landscape. I think only Adam Buxton's really managed to subvert that form in any entertaining way. But, you know, they pay. So that's why everyone's uh, shilling themselves so shamefacedly. Got no problem with that at all, to be honest. But anyway, that's one of the routes. Then there's the Patreon route. Patreon, I guess it's Patreon, which is basically set up a subscription service inviting people to donate to help fund the podcast. Um, I mean, that's an interesting one, isn't it, really? I kind of thought, you know, if I charged a quid an episode, it's hardly it's hardly a lot of money, is it? But not that I'm going to do that. I'm just interested. I'd be interested to see who, you know, how quickly the drop-off would be, how um, how many people would do it, how many listeners would stick around. I've got no idea. I just, like I said, I'm just investigating. It's just interesting. And then there's the merch and events route, you know, sell shit do events, you know, get paid that way. Or then there's the affiliate marketing route, which is an interesting one. I mean, people basically put Amazon links on their sites and ask you to buy through those, which means, I don't know if you know what affiliate marketing is, but it just means that you, a percentage of that, it doesn't cost you anything, goes to the affiliate. So in in this case, that would be me. So uh, yeah, I'm going to keep looking into it, keep you lot posted. I'd actually really like to hear what people think about it as well to be honest. I I get a lot of feedback about the show, which is brilliant. Highlight of my week, really. And people seem to really, really like it. I know I say this quite often, but it continues to amaze me and I continue to get countless messages across all mediums. And, you know, the last couple of weeks has been a case in point because I have slowed it down a bit and I've had a lot of messages from people bigging up the show, asking me what's going on, who's next, where's the podcast, encouraging me to, to keep going it's all great and massively appreciated. And, you know, like I I said a lot at the start, I've not really said it for a while, but if you do want to support and you do want to keep, keep encouraging me and also like help me get a bigger audience, which hopefully means that I can snag some of those sweet adverts. Um, well, I don't know if I'd actually be able to do one of those blue apron ads, but you know what I mean? Then the best thing you can do is share on social, leave me a five star review on iTunes, do little things that I ask, like recommend me to the guardian, and also, drum roll, vote for me in the British Podcast Awards, which I uh, took the liberty of entering myself into the other week. There is a Listener's Choice Award happening. I just had a look tonight, actually, on the site, and they haven't actually said how you can vote for that. But obviously, if I could di- direct my loyal listeners to that, their corner of virtual real estate to register their interest in this gig officially, like that would be much appreciated. Because, yeah, those those are the kind of things that do really help and do help me get the word out there. So, yeah, there we go. Enough yibble from me for another week. I'll leave you once again. I'm off to Scotland tomorrow for Up Battle, which is a split boarding and general gathering of the UK snowboarding tribes up in the Highlands. Should be pretty funny. I'm going to catch up with a lot of old friends up there. And I'm going to be interviewing the great Jeremy Sladen for the podcast up there. 
definitely one of the uh, unsung heroes of UK snow- snowboarding. Massive influence on my own career. And it must be said, a complete gobshite. So that should be a good one. And uh, I keep you posted on that. So yeah, anyway, that's it for me. Enjoy. Thanks for listening. And I'll see you later. Nice one. <laughs>